after the campaigning hype and usual dramas associated with the midterm by election, the results from Eden Monero, one of the most beautiful parts of Australia, are in. Well, almost in, because even though Labor have claimed victory, the official AEC count continues. Here's Anthony Albanese today. This is the day when Christy McBain's life will really change. It'll change for the better and she'll change Australia for the better. I congratulate Christy McBain on a fantastic victory in Ed Monero. However, there are some things that we can say about what's happened and they present both good and bad news to the two major political parties. Overall, though, the best news is that the Greens' political party vote went backwards for a party that made hay over the summer bushfires, claimed it was all about climate change induced to, you know, effects and that we needed action now. It's a terrible result. This is the worst primary vote for the Greens in the electorate since the 2001 federal election. Perhaps people get that in Eden Marrow. The, the fires were about a lack of hazard control burning. Now, for the Labor Party, who are on track to narrowly win the seat, that's good news, especially given the dominance of the Prime Minister and the government during COVID-19. However, a swing away from Labor of 3% on primary and a vote of around 36% as a primary vote is a significant issue. Sure, the votes come back from shooters and fishers and we see the nationals, but it again underlines the fact that the ALP have been deserted by hard-working Australians. Note that in the 2007 election, their Eden Monero primary vote was 44.6%. Yesterday's result looks like the lowest primary for Labor in 30 years. And finally, for the Coalition, there's not been a significant swing away from them. This is a particularly good boost given the summer bushfires. However, there is, in my view, a disturbing conclusion. A Prime Minister with a stratospheric approval rating hasn't moved the needle. People may think he's doing a good job, and he is, but Eden Monero backs up the national news poll result showing the Coalition stuck at a primary vote of 42%. And there needs to be some serious soul-searching about why this is the case in the Liberal Party. Well, Corey, that kicks it off tonight. What do you think? Well, Campbell, congratulations on belling the cat about the Greens. They are uh, a terrible influence on the political landscape in this country and they got their just desserts uh, by trying to make hay, as you said, over the bushfires because we know the bushfires were uh, heightened because of the Greens policy preventing the lack of clearing, which you quite rightly pointed out. Where I slightly disagree with you uh, is in respect to this lesson for the Liberal Party. Uh, yeah, the Prime Minister's got very high ratings and I think that's entirely reasonable, but there was nothing really riding on this for the electorate as such. Um, uh, people were thinking it's not going to change government, it's not going to do much. I think they sent a bit of a message that they don't like the Labor Party under Anthony Albanese, but, uh, and they parked their votes with some minor parties. And uh, if my assessment's correct, and I'm happy, Campbell, for you to, to correct me if this is wrong, but Labor really only got there because of preferences from the Greens, which is normal, but also from the Shooters and Fishers Party. And if that's the case, uh, when an election, when a government is riding on it, I think that people will probably be a bit more circumspect about how they cast their first preference um, at uh, the next federal election. What do you reckon about that? Well, Corey, look, I'll go right out on a creaky branch. I mean, it's ancient history now. I actually thought the coalition really could win, and I guess I'm surprised they didn't. But, look, Emma, what do you think about what I've just said and, and Corey's sort of mm. uh, uh, rebuttal on part of it? Yeah, sure. So I'm quite surprised that actually we picked up the seat. I thought that it was gone. Um, look, I knew it was going to be close and uh, hats off to both those women for their campaigns. Um, I think that the absence of Scott Morrison during the last week of that campaign was quite noticeable. Um, he may not be as popular as, uh, as he'd like to think he is and certainly stayed well away from um, Eden Monero in that last week of the campaign, which is quite telling. Um, in terms of, um, of the Greens limiting... Uh, 
back burning and has it. I, you know, I'm, I'm trying not to roll my eyes here at you, Corey. But um, I mean, we know that <laughs> the Greens them. don't hold power in, in in any federal or um, or state government around the country. And I think that this whole notion that the Greens stop anything is just preposterous. Sure, they've got a, they're going to have a whinge on the sidelines, but in terms of being able to legislate policy and direct where and how we backburn is just garbage. Um, those those bushfires and keep in mind, guys, before I came to beautiful Perth, I lived at the foot of the Blue Mountains and have lived there for almost all of my life, a place that is uh, chronically infested by bushfires each, each summer. And so just simply, uh, you know, putting bushfires down to a lack of hazard reduction is a really simplistic way of, of viewing what actually went wrong there. And having been to Eden Monero and into Mogo straight after those, um, those bushfires tore through there, knowing uh, ScoMo was on a holiday in Hawaii while literally they were defending their houses, I think that the people mm. probably pushed back a little bit, but maybe not as much as we'd seen. But I think it was a weird election. We are voting under corona times. There was loads and loads of postal votes. There was heaps of free poll votes, which we know affects the final outcome. Well, Catherine, um, I don't know if Emma quite agrees with me there about the politics of the, the Green vote, because that's what I was really talking about, not so much... Mm about the causes of bushfires, but I was really just zooming, zooming in on, you know, what people in Eden Monero think about it. And my take, uh, that's the point I'm trying to make this evening, is that mm. people rejected uh, the stuff that people like Adam Bant were running around saying. But uh, yeah. uh, how do you sort of uh, see this whole uh, outcome? Well, look, I, you know, I, I, I think the best piece of analysis I saw... Uh, on the eve of it was from Jared Henderson in The Australian who made the very, very opposite point that governments just don't win by elections. And it was never going to be easy for the coalition, especially after the yeah. self-indulgent behaviour, the dummy spit from Andrew Constance, who wanted the seat handed to him without a, an internal ballot, and in the process derailed Jim Molan, who worked harder than anyone, both on the ground in the campaign and also to democratise the New South Wales branch to in, enfranchise members. So I, I found it not surprising in the least that Labor won the seat, but I think when you look, when you peel it back, and let's face it, the other thing, once Peter Van Onselen predicted that ScoMo would win, it was 100% guaranteed the ALP would hold the seat, uh, in that <laughs> if you want the perfect bellwether uh, to determine which way to bet, go, go against PVO's predictions uh, and you can't lose. So it was inevitable, in my view, that, that Labor would retain the seat. Labor's primary vote is actually alarmingly low. And after all that went on in that seat, given that McBain is a decent, popular local candidate, replacing a pretty popular person in Mike Kelly, where was the sort of traditional 5 6% swing that customarily goes to the opposition? This is a third-term government. And I just think they've underperformed very badly. They've got a lot more to worry about out of this result than the coalition does, in my view. Well, well, come on, Corey, you've got to defend the honour of PVO, surely. I mean, put aside any of it <laughs> that's been said already. <laughs> come on, mate. Yeah, I, I, unfortunately, <laughs> Peter may be a lovely bloke, but I can't defend his honour. Uh, but, Campbell, with your indulgence, can I go back to something that Emma raised, you know, uh, suggesting the Greens aren't in power and don't have any influence or authority. You know, there's this thing called the Senate, which I'm familiar with a little bit, where the Greens no, doesn't matter. Uh, basically held the, held the Senate to, to capture because they held the balance of power for a very long time. They teamed up with the Labor Party. They could prevent almost any policy from getting through simply by virtue of their numbers. And Labor became, you know, sort of eaten alive by green culture. You see it in your policy mix that goes out there. You see it in how destructive it is. It is about identity politics. And to, to sort of blase dismiss them and say they can't influence our environment, they can't influence our government, they can't influence our policy mix, I think is perhaps the most simplistic and naive statement that anyone in politics can say today because they're dangerous. They are very, very dangerous, Campbell. I'm more afraid of uh, I'm more afraid of Pauline Hanson over there in the Senate. But uh, look, I mean, we know that uh, backburning policy isn't created in the federal um, in the federal parliament in the in the Senate. That's a state by state issue. Um, Corey, no one worries about the Senate anymore. Like I just, you know, it's not. No, I'm obviously joking. Well, you, but look, you I, I, I you take just the said point. You're worried about Pauline. <laughs> only, only because of, you know, you know, 
<laughs> Not because she's actually in the Senate, but because she's got some <laughs> whack ideas. But, Catherine, um, I just want to pick up something that you said uh, is in that uh, uh, it would have been quite unusual for the government to pick up a seat at the by-election. I think that I was reading uh, it, it, it would have been... It would have broken 100 years, um, a trend, um, in terms of the government being able to take that seat back out of Labor's hands. So um, I suppose we're, we're on par there somewhere, but... Um, I certainly think that it's it's um, Corey or Campbell, I'm not sure which one of you made the point, but both parties, I think, should absolutely be concerned about um, about that result. I, I like, disagree. I think, you know, a, a third-term government that is facing... And, and, and let's, again, Emma, when you localise it, the PM had a, a pretty bad couple of months when, during the bushfire season. The holiday was very, very badly judged. I... I criticised him at the time for that. I thought it showed a lack of judgment. He went to Cabargo, where he was repudiated very, very aggressively by voters down there. As I understand it, the Cabar Cabargo booth did not swing massively to the ALP at all. In fact, what it shows is that all those who rushed to judgment and said ScoMo was finished at Christmas, and many did, by the way, some big names, particularly on the insider's couch, said this is the beginning of the end. And what we've seen is a below-par uh, performance from the ALP. Its primary vote is stuck in the mid-30s, mid which is simply uh, makes it unelectable at a national level. And the Shooters Fishers Party vote will, will essentially fold into the coalition vote at the general election. So my prediction would be, I don't want to stick my neck out like the columnist I just attacked, but the fact is, I'd rather be the coalition than Labor at a general election where this is a bellwether seat because I think the Conservative vote will probably go home. This has been... An, this was an extraordinarily difficult climate because of the nature of the bushfires and COVID going back to back. I, I, you couldn't have given the seat away, and yet Labor has, has been forced to swing for 24 hours. They should have been able to call this 15 minutes after the polls closed in a third-term government with a candidate of the calibre of Christy McBain. Uh, I, I, agree I think it shows you what a drag and... on the ticket elbow is. Catherine, I agree with you, but it's the Eden Monero by-election is now a matter of history.